Welcome to Dr. Mary Travel Best's Five Steps to Solo Travel Guide for people like you who need a little extra support traveling one at a time. I appreciate your feedback and travel questions, so go ahead, tell me them. I'm working with the Travel Best team and we're creating a travel workbook and a third book in the series. It's part C about 90 days around the world. Have you bought and read any of the books in the series yet? In this episode, the FAQ is, how do I get to and from the airport? I'm an inexperienced flyer and I need to know how to get there and back if I don't take a taxi or Uber Lyft, which can be very expensive. Today's destination is Naples, Italy, part one. And today's misstep, I took the subway in the wrong direction. The travel advice, use chat GBT for travel ideas, but verify the results. And the FAQ, here we go. I haven't flown since the pandemic, you asked. So how do I get to and from the airport? Every city is different, right? I know my home airport, but the others are a mystery. And here's the answer. One of the best ways to get information about airports is to contact the airport directly and see what options are available. Many cities such as Denver, Atlanta, Chicago, and San Francisco are linked by rail, so it's easy to navigate. Dallas has a train to one of the airports, and you can take a bus from that airport to Love Field, where there is no rail. Other cities have different ways to get to and from the city. I live in San Diego, and they have a flyer bus that runs for free from the airport to a bus terminal in Old Town. It runs every 20 minutes, but don't expect help with your baggage. The driver works for the airport, and it's a temporary route until they figure out how to get a light rail to the airport. Most airports have good directions and clear signage, so know what to look for when arriving and departing. Taking an Uber or Lyft or taxi can be effective for traveling to and from the airport if you're in a hurry, but you can still hit traffic jams, so be prepared. And now for today's destination, Naples, Italy, part one. Naples, Napoli, is about an hour from Rome by train. It's an underrated city with some rough edges, eh, but give it a chance. It's a city not to be mixed if you're in Italy. It's a step five trip because you need to be more experienced as a traveler to be here solo. My new friend from Servas, Rosanna, she's lived in the Vomero district for about 20 years. And here's some more background. It's the third largest city in Italy, and it's got a lot of history, some art, architecture, and of course, delicious food. But it does get a bad rap for crime and grime. So there are some blemishes, and that's a reality for residents, but, Tourism is important to them. So you might find some better places like Certosa e Museo de San Martino, and you'll be rewarded with some great views. My pronunciation may not be great, so bear with me. Stroll the Via Caraciolo e Lungmantare di Napoli, as I did for a full day, or chat with friendly locals like Rosanna, and you'll experience some of the magic this port city holds. And of course, you can't forget the joy that comes from the first bite of Neapolitan pizza in the city credited with inventing the pizza. So also look for that perfect gelato. The art stations distributed along the metro lines, one and six, include more than 180 pieces of art created by 90 international authors and local architects, allowing them to combine different architectural styles. I often use the Quattro Giordano Metro Stop, and if you don't ride the subway, you'll miss all of these. Mapatella Beach is where I went swimming along the coast. Now, Via Cayahia District is a high-end strolling area. And I also found great art museums. I found beautiful old and pop art. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about my friend, Rosanna. She's retired. She volunteers with kids, and she lives with two cats. 
She's got a lot of fruit and a lot of energy. And thankfully, she picked me up at the train station when I arrived in Naples. I found that people here are very happy. They like to sing that song, O Solo Mio. Now, if you translate that, that means the sun is first in front of me. So it's a very positive sound. Now, Naples has some very emotional people. And very, very enjoyment of their soccer is important. Like they love soccer teams that win and they were winners in 2023. And I experienced that excitement and the drama. Spacanopoli, literally Naples splitter, is the bustling narrow street that traverses Naples Centro Storico. That's the historical center. And you'll see buzzing Vespas, neighbors debating politics from opposing balconies, and tiny artisan workshops humming with the noise of hammers. Spena Poli is the vibrant heart of this irresistible city. You'll see some stunning coast views near Piazza San Arazzo down Posilipu's Hill. Now, I explored this coastline and found the boatyards. I wanted to go swimming, kayaking, and play tennis on clay at this private club. I saw the wall-to-wall entire trophy case at this country club along the coast in Naples. However, I was asked to leave since I was not a member. It was lovely though. Further strolling revealed several naked people sunbathing on the rocks. And I also saw three huge ships resembling buildings which were in the port. That night for dinner, cod and tomato sauce, squash with garlic, and a specialty Napoli drink. One of the nicest feelings I ever had was from a simple Chinese head massage tool from Rosanna. So I bought two when I got home. And now for today's misstep. I took the subway in the wrong direction because I did not realize there were three levels inside the subway instead of just two. So don't make my mistake. Ask if there's another level before you board the wrong train. And if you are wrong, you can always go back the other direction. And now today's travel advice, use chat GPT for travel ideas, but verify those results. In previous podcasts, I've mentioned how to use chat GPT for travel. If you're not using it, you could miss out on some great hidden gems for your travel. Now, you can also use others like Perplexity, and there's plenty of other platforms. Now, if you use tour guides, you know, your tour guides are probably using these tools to learn some secrets and factoids for their upcoming tours. So why keep yourself in the dark? You could use any of these AI platforms, whichever one you like best, and explore before you leave home. However, remember this, check the responses for what they call hallucinations, because these chatbots, these tools, they do make things up. I want to bring meaning to your future travel, so sign up for the Dr. Travel Best newsletter. Let's connect on all my social media and websites, and you can also go to Amazon and find Five Steps to Solo Travel Series. Show notes have a lot more details, and I appreciate you giving a review for this podcast. What's on your travel bucket list? Tell the doctor and her team of women who travel the world seeking the very best. Dr. Travel Best, that is.